hello folks so in this video i am going to cover loss function that is what a loss function is and what its significance is in artificial neural networks i briefly uh, you know covered the topic of loss function in my previous videos and here i am going to cover it in detail Folks, this is Nitin uh, welcoming you to AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite, uh, favorite uh, digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, uh, AI, big data, Hadoop, virtual reality and cloud computing. And you can acquire the related skill set in order to advance your career uh, in these fields. This channel takes hands-on approach to build AI based products and applications. So if you are new here, then consider clicking that uh, uh, to this uh, channel or if you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century so loss function is something which as we know uh, you know a stochastic gradient descent tries to minimize by uh, continuously uh, updating weights during model training i also introduced the concept of epoch which is a one forward pass and a one backward pass of all the training examples for example let's say you if you have a uh, thousand training examples and your batch size is 500 then it will take two iterations to complete one epoch okay and here batch size is equals to the number of training examples in one forward slash backward pass okay uh, the higher batch size, uh, the higher the batch size, the more memory space you will need. Okay, so keep in mind. Now, during the training process, we uh, run several epochs on the same data in order to, uh, you know, improve the accuracy overall. So during the training process, at the end of each epoch, the loss is calculated on model predictions. So essentially, the model uh, calculates the error on each input provided by um, or looking at the output it predicted and then uh, taking the difference of that predicted value and the actual value which is nothing but the label value okay so we know that in supervised learning we have label and features so those labels i'm talking about for example, uh, let's let me take this example. So if let's say uh, we are working on a classification problem where we are predicting uh, whether an image is of car or aeroplane, right? Now the label of actual values associated with aeroplane is let's say one and for car it is zero. Okay, now when we pass a new image of aeroplane to our model and our uh, uh, let's say our model uh, outputs the probability as 0 0.40 or 40 percent for it then the error between the predicted and actual value would be 0.4 minus 1 okay uh, and i told you 1 was the actual value right so it came uh, the difference came as minus 0 0.60 so it performs this activity for each input okay so it calculates or it performs this particular activity for each and every input then we square each individual values okay because we need to take a you know a, a non a negative values so that's why we square off uh, the values so if we square 0.60 it will came uh, it will come as uh, in fact it was minus 0.60 so we square off that uh, points minus 0 0.60 value so so um, uh, here i am saying that uh, we need to square each individual values and calculate the average of these values to get the mean square error loss function okay and there are a lot of other loss functions like mean absolute error mean bias error hinge loss cross entropy etc but the general idea discussed here uh, remains the same for all these functions just the implementation uh, with respect to different algorithm of loss function changes that is uh, instead of uh, squaring the individual values and summing them to calculate the average which we did in mean square error other algorithms may incorporate other formulas okay accordingly to calculate the loss based on underlying loss function algorithm 
hinge loss may be uh, you know may have a different formula cross entropy might have different one and so and so forth so in a nutshell the process of calculating the loss occurs at the end of each epoch during the model training and the value of the loss is constantly changing since the weights of our model are constantly being updated okay since uh, the overall goal is to minimize the error to increase the accuracy so with every epoch the loss decreases continuously okay keep in mind so a loss function is a measure of how good a prediction model does in terms of being able to predict the expected outcome so folks this is it for this video to conclude i explained a loss function and its significance in the artificial uh, neural networks also discussed about how this loss gets calculated in neural network so folks let me ask you a question from today's video okay uh, what is the significance of epochs in neural network training please post your comments in the comment section given below because i get motivated as well as uh, you know get a chance to incorporate your feedback you can also ask your uh, technical questions in the comment section so i will be glad to answer your questions okay and if you're watching this video and you are uh, not already a subscriber to our channel consider clicking that little subscribe button in case you have not already subscribed uh, then uh, you know uh, click on bell icon to receive the notifications whenever i will release a new video so thanks for hanging out with me guys i will be covering next topic in the upcoming video so keep on watching thank you